So, a little bit of an update. Cannot get the pegs in. Bring water, kids. <laughs> so slippery. But there's the tent. How awesome is that? <laughs> in today's video, we're going to be going up the mighty hell of Ellen and while camping on top, it's going to be an epic night. I'm here with Kay. And basically we've come to the lakes for the weekend. So we arrived yesterday and we arrived at Grassmere Youth Hostel. We didn't get there till about half past five. So we managed to pitch up the tent. Then we went out for a few drinks in Grassmere, which was lovely. And then woke up this morning to frost on the tent. It was a cold, cold night. The temperature said minus five at one stage. So yeah, freezing night, but it was lovely. It's a bit of a late start this morning and we've driven up just to the, just to film, film here. Parked up and now we're going to head up the backside of Helvellyn. I've been up here loads of times, but I've never been up this way before. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned, and we're going to have a lovely wild camp as well. Last night, we stayed in the Nature High Copulus 3, which was brilliant. I did a first look. I'll leave the video above of that tent. I have made a few changes, which I suggested. I've made a footprint and things, but the tent was brilliant last night. So much room, great for cooking. Really, really loved it. Really solid as well. But today, I brought a different tent. <laughs> So stay tuned and you'll see what that one is. It's an absolutely glorious day, blue skies. It's obviously freezing, there's frost on the ground. Can't wait. <laughs> so far so good? Yeah. I'll take you through our kit in a little bit as well, just to show you what we brought. Because obviously it's colder weather now, so you do need a few, few little extras, not much. But you can see I've not got a massive backpack, but I've got a three, three person tent in the back there. A little spoiler to what tent I brought. But it should be nice, we're hoping for a lovely clear night, taking the views over Red Tarn, and we're hoping to wake up some nice frost in the morning. It's a nice sharp climb up from film here. There's a car park right in the distance over there. I think it's £12 for 12 hours and you've got to pay at the machine so we can't really leave it overnight because you have to be back for 7 in the morning so the little first car pack I pointed out that's £8 for 24 hours so as long as we're back by 5 to 11 tomorrow we're good as you can tell we've started late today 11 o'clock but we didn't want to leave too early we had a lovely breakfast at the youth hostel 9 99 can't beat it it won't take us long to get to the top so it's just a nice and relaxed one we've had this booked in for a while haven't we Mm. <laughs> and when we had it booked in the weather was grim the forecast but we committed to it and oh it's gorgeous now it's so nice we're supposed to get rain tomorrow but it's just frosty and beautiful just like my guy and i'm glad to say there's no wind today so the audio should be clear apologies for those omm videos if you haven't seen them do watch them but the audio is naff we've got the poles out just to make it a little bit easier on our legs when we're carrying these heavy backpacks Right, we've stripped off, not fully. I was stripping <laughs> off fully. I think Kay grabbed the camera out. I don't know if she caught it. I was trying to get my pants off quickly as two girls were coming around the corner. Ladies. Ladies. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Uh, but yeah, I had my um, Revolution Race leggings on this morning because it was cold. Way too warm for them. So shorts, t-shirt. I have got a long sleeve little base layer underneath here. A little heat warmers one, which is nice. I'm not sure why I've not done this one before. I think it's because it's straight. It's quite direct. I normally like to do a circular. But I'm looking forward today to having a chilled hike up, enjoy the views, enjoy the weather, before we even bother look setting up the tent. It's going to be nice. And this is Brown Cove Crags up here. Brown Cove Crags. But as I said earlier, this isn't a, a race today. We're just up here to enjoy it, take our time getting the views <laughs> and smiles on our faces. This in the middle here is Great Gable. To the right of it is Green Gable and the one in front will be Seathrake Fell. And if you follow that along, you'll have Alan Craggs and Glaramara where we were not so long ago. So that one there must be Scarfell. I could have all this wrong. I think it's Scarfell and you've got Mickledore and stuff like that. I'm not great at calling them out. I think we're down there, we've got Keswick, and that'll be Skidor, which means that in the distance, either it's there, it could be there or further on, but that'll be Blencathra as well. 
just got to the top of this section I thought I'll just whip up here quickly look at the views see people come along the ridges here as well no and that is what we do it for so I've put the poles away now it's pretty got we've still got some more elevation but not as steep now Keep on the electrolytes. As some of you, if you'd have watched my OMM race, you'll have seen I struggle with my um, with cramp. None of that today. I've been well hydrated, had my electrolytes. But just to say, you've got to keep an eye on yourself and make sure you are hydrated and that you you eat right as well. We had a nice big breakfast this morning, but we brought some energy bars. Um, you have the electrolytes to replace your salts and stuff because. I mean, we're going to take Kay to get checked out, but I'm sure Kay sh um, struggles with low, with low sugars, low blood sugar, because every now and then at home, I can see her flaking and she'll get shaking. She needs to get something to eat. Well, that happened. That's happened before up here today. So earlier on, we sat down, we had a rest, made sure Kay had plenty of electrolytes, had some food. And you're feeling a bit better now, aren't you? Had a cuddle. <laughs> had a cuddle. She's feeling a bit better. Still lovely up here, no wind. Really enjoying it. Awesome views. Wow. Look at that. We've just got to the top of that section, and as you can see in front of us, there we go. That's Helvellyn, Swivel Edge, and Cat's Die Cam. And what we're just doing, I've just decided to peel off to the left, and we're just going to tag lower man and this is at 925 meters makes sense while we're there it's gonna be busy on hellvelling today <laughs> loads of people up here i know i keep saying it but it's absolutely perfect conditions honestly i've not hiked in conditions like this for a long time we in fact really yeah in fact i'd say the last time i camped in it i said the last time i hiked it was like this was probably back to my long distance hikes let's go and touch there's some mate, loads of people there. Hi, all right. Lower man, 925. Oosh. Again, testing my, way, my uh, mountains knowledge here, but I think this one up here is Birkenhouse House Moor. So that's a circle you can do up there, which I'll come and do another day. Loads of people on cats to cam. Yeah, and swirl edge. I love swirl edge. And in the distance, you swirl edge here, and on the other side, you've got obviously striding edge and red tarn in between. Glad we came. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lovely way up that as well. I'd, if you're going to come up, I'd advise doing that way. It's just basic, it's quite standard. Just up and up and up. But obviously, striding edge is a hell of a lot more fun. But if, if striding edge isn't your thing, this is a, another alternative. Or you can come around this way as well. Do a little circular but for now let's go over to Helvellyn tag that sun's getting lower in that sky as you can see and then we'll find a place to pitch as we ponder <laughs> walking up to Helvellyn just realized I've got no water which is gonna be a problem because I don't think there's any water sources up here and everything's frozen so it's a little bit of a problem now and we're going to need water, because I can manage with no food, but Kay can't. We need to make her a dehydrated meal. We want to make a brew and things like that. So the plan is, tag Helvellyn, and then have a quick scout to see if we can find anywhere, even lower down, I can get some water. Absolute worst case scenario, there is red tarn. But that means climbing all the way down and all the way back up. I will if I have to. But I really don't want to. So we'll get up here, tag this, have a little skirt out for some water, and then we need to find a pitch because the sky, that sun, is getting lower. <laughs> so worst case scenario, <laughs> that can be our water source, but we'll have to see. See, I want to pitch up here high, but if I have to, I can walk all the way down here and come back again. Yeah, the same worst case scenario. I could come down through a ledge. It's just a bit slow, and then once I get down to here, could just jog it down, get that, and then 
trek back up. No, we're going to camp up here on the summit. <laughs> right, well, let's just touch this. Okay, so Hellvelin, 950 meters. Right, boom, done. Let's go find some. <laughs> Need to keep moving. So we'll just come round here. There's obviously other bits up here in the shelter and stuff, but let's just get over this side and have a little scout out. Um, what we're gonna do? I'm hoping I can see some water sources down here, but if I can't, what I'll do? We'll find a little pitch. We'll pitch up early, get the tent pitched up, and I'll go and get water. It's going to be slippy coming down there today, but it shouldn't take too long. I'm going to have to pitch somewhere just over here. So, a little bit of an update. Cannot get the pegs in. <laughs> I've just been going around with my peg and the ground, I mean, it's not surprising. It's rocky and it's absolutely solid. So, I think what we're going to have to do is we need some water anyway it looks like it's probably not going to be a summit camp and i think what we might do is make our way down swivel edge which is going to be a challenge for kate she doesn't like edges make our way down swivel edge come down and camp down at the bottom not as epic but the sunrise will be over there tomorrow anyway so we'll still get a nice sunrise what do you think yeah. you like it by the water anyway don't you <laughs> at least we've come up here We've enjoyed it and unfortunately this is going to be, uh, be a bit of an edge for you now. Yeah, but the thing is with hiking, like something I've come to realise being out with Chris is you can have, it's always good to have a plan. Like it's always good to have a base plan, but you've got to be okay with it changing because Chris has just tried putting the pegs in and they just wouldn't go in. The ground is rocky as it is, but then it's icy as well. So yeah, it's just not clever. Oh, I've got one in. I've got one in there. Should we try again over there? Let's yeah. try again. Maybe you just got to get under that layer. Oh, oh yeah. So it will go in. Just about, yeah. Right, let's just pitch the tent. Let's try. Yeah. Now I'm gonna pitch the tent like a speed of lightning. One eternity later. I'll tell you what, it's freezing. The nightmare getting these pegs in as well. Would you like hand? Go on. Oh, careful. I don't bend the peg up one. I'm not at an angle where I can put a weight on it. That's it, go on, it's going in. Keep going. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, tell you what, what a nightmare it is getting these in. But she's looking good, we're getting there. the summit camp that wasn't going to be a summit camp that is now back to being a summit camp get in the thing we do need to do really is <laughs> and you could do moving these i know we've just got them in but they're not in the right place i don't know if you can see but <laughs> i've just said yeah, to chris look at this hey look he went the tent's icy already i went yeah it will be because we packed a wet tent this morning he went this is a different tent <laughs> yeah come here look at this <laughs> Look, literally, and we're still setting up. Oh. It's going to be cold tonight. <laughs> what I will show you is one modification I've made already to this tent is on here, normally tied on here, and then it's got one of these on this side. So I've made sure that there's two on each side so you can adjust each one individually. So just this one here, and then we should be good. Right, let's get the tent open.
this door is to double double door so it opens on the other side nice big tunnel tent all this is nice and tall it is lower than the other tent we've got but we can open the vents up which we will do to let a good air flow through and yeah there we go nice big footprint what do you think of it i love it we're icing up already so i've got to get a wiggle on get my leggings on make sure i'm nice and warm empty my bag and take a lighter backpack and go and get some water i will never get it i'll be dark when i get back <laughs> right i'll bring you back when i'm getting onto swivel edge okay change the tire got some leggings on i've taken everything out of my backpack left k there <laughs> what a pitch what a pitch we've got striding edge just over the other side we'll wake up to these views in the morning and this will be sunset hopefully i'll be back in time to see that bleeding sunset so i'm going to try and get down to red time now get some water but i'm gonna to have to go down swirl edge bit of a pain but i'm not aware of any other water up here so it's gonna be a leg burner this all the way down here all the way down here i'm back again bring water kids <laughs> bring you back on swivel edge if you want to see a video of me coming down here if you check on my channel i've got a really old video coming down here in the uh, in snow solo which was good but this time it's just a case of getting down quickly and safely so we can get some water i've got an hour before sunset so hopefully i can get down and up in that time Right, I'm going to take you off my chest because the rug golf was flapping around everywhere. For all my years coming up Hell Belling, and I've been up here a lot of times, Striding Edge used to do it every few weeks. Um, I've never camped on top of Hell Belling, so it'd be nice today. Uh, get in there. Certainly getting a workout today. I'm nearly down to the path. So I'll get on that path, get down there and bring you back. It's just a minute later. Look at it. Look how perfect it is. That's striding edge. And we're camped just, just over the summit back there. Kind of in between those two bits. Gonna be an awesome spot for the night. We should be finding the Fjall Raven tent, so yes. I didn't say the name of it before, but this is my uh, brand new tent, Abisco Light 3. You'll have seen on the channel, I have got a video above at Alport Castle, which is a good video. And that was in the Abisco Light 1. I did that tent a year, it's been brilliant, never let me down. I absolutely love it. But I've decided to sell that tent and I managed to buy the Abisco Light 3 for the same price. So it's a no brainer. There's not as much room as the, the Oculus 3, the Nature Height 1, but it's, uh, it's absolutely solid in winter conditions. That's what it's built for. So it's hunkered down, it isn't going anywhere. And with it being a true, a true four season tent, it's a solid inner as well, so it should be nice and warm tonight. Oh, my legs and thighs are starting to feel this. I've got to come back up yet. But at least when I'm up there, I can have a brew, some nice food. <laughs> I've got down here so quick. One thing I took out of my bag though <laughs> is my trekking poles. Ah! Kay said, take your trekking poles. I went, no, I'll be fine. But look what I've got to go back up after this. Oh. Uh, all the way up there again. Uh, so I probably could have done my trekking poles for that. <laughs> oh well. What I'm going to do when I fill up now, to be fair, the water's nice and clean, so you could probably just fill your bottle straight up. But I brought my Catadin B3 filter. You've seen it on the channel loads of times. So I'll filter that, decant it into the bottles. But I just want to say, top, top tip. Water is going to freeze tonight. Everything's going to freeze. So what's essential 
is that you look after your filter. If you leave any water in your filter, so I'm going to shake it, shake it, shake it, get it really dry, and then it's going to be going in my jacket. When I get in my tent, it'll be going in my sleeping bag. You've got to keep it warm because if your filter freezes, it'll crack it and break it. And I mean crack the filter section, not the bag, obviously. You've got to be really careful. You've got to keep it warm. So in the bottom of my sleeping bag, normally I've got loads of things. I've got my foam, my GoPro batteries, anything like that. Keep them warm or they just deteriorate. <sighs> Is that not an epic view or what? <laughs> filter. Got a few water bottles. And I've got me one of had my electrolytes in, so what I'll do, take advantage, finish these electrolytes, and then we'll top up. Oh. This is where we find out the filter's clogged. <laughs> Hopefully not. Nope. Oh, perfect. That water is absolutely freezing. So I'm telling you that filter will definitely freeze if you leave it. One down, a few to go. Oh, done. So I filled up, I brought my uh, Knock, however you pronounce it, one litre bag. So I filled that. I filled two 850ml water bottles and I filled a little like nature height uh, re reusable bottle as well. Now to get back up here, back to the path, that's Cats to Cam, and then over the ridge. It's a shame because what I wanted to do tomorrow was just carry on and uh, go somewhere else, but we're going to have to hike back to the car tomorrow because I've got to be back to the car by 10 to 11 as the ticket runs out. Nothing I can do, can't top up remotely. Can only do it at the machine. <sighs> right, now to go up Swivel Edge. This is a new one for me. I've been down it probably 20 times, never been up it. And my legs are burning. <laughs> but we'll get up there, get a lovely view. Oh, I've had to whip that jacket off. Too warm. I needed it for coming down because it is a bit cold, but coming up, I'm going to get a sweat on. So bye bye, thank you Red Time for the water. Next, Swirl Edge, again. <laughs> People on top there. It makes me think, I wonder if that's Kay up there. You never know. <laughs> There's Kay. Just gotta get up there now. So slippery. Let's do this. One eternity later. Right, made it back up. Whew. What a slog. Sun hasn't gone behind the mountains yet. <sighs> made it. <laughs> There's Kay waving just to the left of the extra thing jumping up and down. Just been chatting to two lovely lads on the summit there. <laughs> he shouted over because that's the first time I've seen somebody else with exactly the same shoes as mine. So everyone knows I rave about these Adidas Terex. They're not for everyone though. Don't just go out and buy them because I've got them. But for me, they're perfect, so light. But they don't have, they're not very supportive at the sides, but I don't want that because like, I pack quickly. But they're fully waterproof. He just said it's the first time he's been out in them today. So just asking me some questions. But yeah, he's got a great pair of boots there. Lovely. So the missus is just on here, making friends. <laughs> talking to some people, and look. See the tent in the distance over there. What a pitch. <laughs> here she is. <laughs> Hang on, the camera. Things I do, eh? Oh, we've made it in time for sunset anyway. Time-wise, it's, what did I say, half past three? You set off at 20 past two. Yeah, so it took me an hour and 10 minutes to get down to a ledge to Dread Town and get back up again. Yeah. And here we are back at the tent. I can't wait to get in, but look how frozen it is. Already. <laughs> so this is going to be frozen solid in the morning, look. Great. Look at that. 
amazing. So oh, I was absolutely freezing, so I've just <laughs> I've jumped in here to warm up. But just so you know, Catherine B free filter, bottom of my sleeping bag, electrical bag, bottom of my sleeping bag, and that's where it keeps warm. And then what I've just cracked open are some of these heat warmers. I bought Halfords had a deal on a couple of days ago, and I bought um and we did I buy these 15, 15 packs for nine pounds. So when they get nice and warm now, well these, these last for hours and they're brilliant. So now we're gonna chill out, make a brew, warm up, and uh we'll see if there's a sunset. So tell me about what you've just done and why you did it. What's the little adventure you've just been on? Oh well I've put it said it on there when I had to go back down to Red Tarn just because I didn't have any water. So I felt a bit guilty. That's why I offered to go down to Red Tarn. I wasn't gonna send Kay obviously. But I'm glad I did that. It was a good hike. Warm me up a little bit, <laughs> but now I've got but now I'm in the sleeping bag because my feet are freezing and I definitely need a brew and I can't wait to chill now. It's going to be a long night in the tent, no wind, it's absolute perfect conditions. Great tent, great company. It just goes, wow, well, you're cute. <laughs> it just goes to show though, like, it, I mean, I know you said about, oh, I'm not taking two bottles because it's carrying the weight, but like, I would normally carry two bottles, no problem, um, and I wish I had. We got up here and I said, Chris, just go down, just go get the water before it goes dark. And he was like, no, I need to set the tent up first. And I was like, there was a bit of a to-do, wasn't there? But you absolutely made no, the right call. There was no to-do because, <laughs> listen, I'm the, listen, yeah, I, I, I said, no, I'm going to set the tent up. Even though it's a little bit early, there's still some people about, yeah. set the tent up. Which then, was absolutely the right call, by the way. Yeah, and then, I would have frozen. so I'm glad we got the pegs in, the tent's solid. It's going to be very, very cold night, but we should be okay. But Enjoy love, it. Love will keep us warm. <laughs> <laughs> Watch on the subscribers. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn this off now. I'll bring you back when we've got a brew in hand. We've got a bit of a foil bottom. Hopefully it won't burn through. And this is the X-Foil here. And inside of those, you just have these little tabs and they just hook on the side, like so. And you can see all of them on there. We put that on there, put some alcohol in. That goes on top. We light it and your pot sits on. And I brought my, my favourite stove out of all the stoves I've got. It's a Soto Amicus. So I've got loads of stoves. I've got the Pocket Rocket 2. I've got the Soto Amicus. I've got the Windmaster. I've got the BRS. Um, I've got, I really, obviously I like my stoves. I've got loads of alcohol stoves. But the one I always use is a Soto Amicus. When you buy that, you can buy it in a set with the River Pot. And it's like a 800, 900 mil pot. I could, should have brought that really. You get that and the stove. And you can get it with or without the Piexo igniter. Mine's without. I wish I got it with, to be fair. Um, it's just brilliant. You don't need the Windmaster. The Windmaster is quite bulky. It doesn't really fit in your pot. But I have got that with the tri stand as well, which is pretty good. It's a bit smaller. But yeah, this is good. Apart from Kane never turns it up, so it takes ages. Get it on full whack. And I'm going to make mine here. I actually like the process of doing it with alcohol, and it's quiet. Shame we haven't got any alcohol. Yes, look at that face. Look. <laughs> Why has she got that face? Mm, maybe. Boiled a kettle, boiled water, then knocked it all over the footprint. <laughs> the water that Chris spent an hour going all the way down from Helvellyn <laughs> to Red Tarn to get water to come all the way back up Squirrel Edge. Squirrel Edge. Yeah. Squirrel Edge. <laughs> but yeah, let me show you the, this last le little bit of setup here now. Look at this. Beautiful, all through, freezing over. And look at the view. The sun has set behind there couple of people up on the summit and look at the moon so it shouldn't go very dark tonight because we've got a full moon so i know the gopro is not going to be very good in this light much longer but luckily we've got a secret weapon i've got a new camera for these hikes i've got the pocket three i did actually use it at the start of the om i got it on the day it came out so i've got the pocket three and the mic and everything but it's absolutely freezing i thought i'd come out and do a last bit of filming before i get in the tent take a few pictures i still not have my brew yet <laughs> Oh, so we're all chilled in the tent now. I wanted to show you what I've done for my stove today. So I brought my Soto lighter. These are brilliant. It just extends and then you press the button. Great. Got a lovely flame going there. And these are just handy. I always bring a lighter, but these are always going to work in all conditions. And it's got a little bit of an extender as well, just to reach into your pot. So I do advise these. They're about £18. For me, I brought two pots today. So I've got my 750ml 
and I've got my little 450mm wide C because usually that's good to boil your water and then nice cuppa. And tonight we're rocking Nescafe two in one rich and smooth. Baby, just like me. Sorry, I'm I'm poor. I might be smooth, but I'm poor, just so you know. We've both got spag ball and we've got that from, from the Fell store. So I've got a discount code still. It's 10% off. There's no kickback to me. It's not an affiliate, but you'll just get 10% off everything store wide. So I'll leave it below. I'll drop it below in the comments and I'll put it below here. Let's just see how this is looking. Oh, a bit of steam. We'll be wobbling in a couple of minutes. I've got my dehydrated meal tucked in my top. That's keeping me warm. It's so nice. So like, you know, like when your mum makes your spaghetti bolognese and it's like proper pasta, proper meat. It doesn't like, the meat in some of the dehydrated meals is like proper chewy, but this is a mega. And it's really tomato -y. It's a little bit creamy as well. <laughs> You're happy now you've got food. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave mine in, in my jacket for another five minutes. Keep warm, I'm gonna eat mine. Can we just appreciate how quiet it is in this tent? There's literally no wind. The tent's moving ever so slightly, but considering we're on the top of Helvellyn, it's unbelievable. I've never known it like this. The weather's unbelievable. So nice. Is the weather unbelievable? The weather's unbelievable. <coughs> right, well, I've not filmed for a while. When I last, when I last filmed, I think we were um, just gonna have a little cheeky lay down. Half past it, five. <laughs> half past five, it's now <laughs> 20 past nine. As you can hear, it's got a little bit of wind and both of us have just needed the toilet. So we've just both got out now. And to be fair, it's not too bad. As you can see, there's ice still on the tent. Um, but we just got out now and it's so light outside because it's a full moon. It's not too bad out there at all. The wind's just blowing constantly. The tent's like a limpet. It's absolutely solid. I've just checked the, the guy lines. And I might whip the camera out and show you outside. We'll see. This is probably the coldest I've ever been camping. Now I'm not cold at all. I feel fine. When I got out there before, I was out there for a good five, six minutes taking some pictures and my hands are my hands are fine. It's I think it's warmer now than it was. Than it was be before. Yeah, before. So, yeah. but it's still icy. But anyway, you'll either see some footage now outside, or we will see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Right, I had to come out. I did promise. It's a bit dark, but let me show you the tent and let me show you the halo moon as well. So there's the tent. I'll have a pitch up. Hopefully. Look at this. How awesome is that? Crazy. Oh, it's a cold one. Let me get this hood up. Oh, I'll tell you what, it was cold last night. Look at the tent. So, last night I got my anemometer out, which, which basically measures the wind temperature and the wind chill. Just before I went to sleep, it was about minus one and a wind chill of minus 6.5. But it's probably colder now. This tent's gonna be heavy as well when it's been taken down because it's full of ice. But it was solid. It did really well. Absolutely fine, really good. Very impressed. Fjall Raven, you did a good job. I think I said at the start of this, I was a bit worried it, it was lower because it's much lower than that nature like Opulus 3 that I've done a review of. It's a good it's a good tent, the other one, but it's not, they say it's four season, it's not, it's three. But you can use it in four, but just, you know, I wouldn't take it on a summit and I wouldn't have it in big strong winds. But other than that, it's brilliant. This has been absolutely solid. So basically, we're just going to pack down now. Kay's putting her stuff in a bag. We'll get everything in our bags ready and outside, and then it'll just be a case of taking the tent down quick as we can, stuffing it in the bag and in top of mine. I must admit, I was cold. Kay used my um, OEX Leviathan 900 sleeping bag. And she was warm. It's a really good bag, that. I used my Ice Flame, I think it's called 14T um, sleeping bag. I've really been impressed with it. It's been perfect in all conditions but I was cold last night, so I need to think about what I'm gonna do for winter. If I'm on my own, I'll use the OEX. If I'm with Kay and she uses that, I think I'll use mine and I'll put my Ice Flame quilt inside it as well, so I'll double up. 
But for now, I'm going to sit in the tent because it's freezing <laughs> while Kay packs down and then I'll film putting this beast away. See all the bit of ice you get off now, it just makes your tent a little bit lighter later because all of this in your bag will turn to water. When you're putting your tent away, get yourself a spongy, the brilliant. Obviously this one's gonna freeze today, but if you get yourself a spongy, they're really absorbent. You just need to keep them in a in a bag and keep them a little bit damp all the time, otherwise they go hard. A couple of other people up here now. So cold. I'm wearing, hopefully you can hear me, I'm wearing a, I've got like a heat warmers, long sleeve base layer. A t-shirt, Revolution Race Waffle base layer, Montane puffer jacket, <laughs> and this puffer jacket I brought two. I actually brought two and a gilet, so, but my hands are cold. I've just got on some normal crappy gloves and some waterproof gloves to put the tent away. Chris's Wild Camping Tips 101. I have a little carabiner on my bag here, so what you do, hook all your peg bags onto there, and hook your tent on there as well. So then when you take your tent away, just in case the wind gets hold of it, it isn't gonna blow anywhere. And what I'll be doing is I'll be taking the sides out, then I'll be taking the poles out and I'll be leaving the four corners pegged down so the tent's flat. And then hopefully I'll be able to unpeg the back ones and then start folding it over just, and leave these pegged until the last minute so it doesn't blow away. Are you cold? Good morning, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> It's cold, isn't it? It's a cold one. It's a cold one. I like the cold. Yeah, it's good in the cold. I'd actually say in the snow, it's warmer. It's colder in the ice. Oh. Is everything out in the tent? Yes, everything's out. Right, I'll set you up. I'll set you up and we'll get it put away. Just to show you how solid this tent is, I've taken out all of the guy lines. I've only got the four corner pegs in and this one loose one at the front. Amazing. Two buttons on the top and it just rolls down compressing it all and you got your little straps at the side and on here strap it all in with this as well that's what we've left and what do you say gleave no trace <laughs> not leave leave no trace but seriously so leave the place as you found it so as you can see where we were just the ice let's head over to the summit and then let's try and find our way down i tell you what i'm actually lovely and warm but i have got two down jackets on <laughs> are you all right yeah i've got my new bag on so i'm very toasty got it recording 
These gloves, by the way, are brilliant. Just some cheap waterproof overmitts from Decathlon. But they're great just to throw on because my, my main gloves aren't waterproof, so brilliant. I love it when it's like this where you can't feel your face, your nose, your lips. You just feel like your face is going to fall off. <laughs> let's go over the summit and then let's, uh, let's see if we can find the path back. There's Red Tarn. I can see a couple of campers at the bottom there. There was one up there as well yesterday. I can't see him. But yeah, a couple of campers putting away there. Striding air. Swirl edge will be slippy today. A couple of people at the summit. As you can probably tell, this is the difficulties walking in this is finding your way. I think this is the one that we, ta we tagged last night before we did Helvellyn. So I think we're going to follow this lower path down. Have you enjoyed this? Because this is the highest. Well, it's, I think it's the highest I've camped in the this UK. Is the highest, coldest camp I have ever done. And do you know what? It has been mint. There's just something so nice about being cold. Like I love the cold. I prefer it in winter rather than summer. I love getting in cold water, ice plunges, ice baths. So yeah, this is like right up my street. You don't like being sweaty in a tent. I'd rather be cold than sweaty. Yeah, you should have said that last night. You could have had my sleeping bag. <laughs> I, felt, I felt so sorry for Chris because he's so prepared. He's so on it. He's so organized. And then last night he was curled up in a ball going, I'm so cold. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to treat myself to a, to a decent like UGQ or I want a really good bag. I just don't know which one to get. There's so many different ones out there, but I want a decent one for all year round, like a big minus 10 bag, what I'll stuff down. Yeah. This is the knee jarring bit now, all the way down. Down, 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 down. That's actually obviously a valid point. It's easier to go up. Yes, it might be harder work on your legs, but going up, it's easier because you can see what you're going to and you can see the grips in front of you. And you know, if you were to fall, you can just grab on, but going down, everything's away from you. Poles help because you can extend them and jab them in in front of you just to slow yourself down. So we've got to get down to. I probably don't even need this hat on now. Oh, there we go. Much better. So, I mean, you'll know him if you're into watching um, camping as well. Andy Beavers, shout out. We were messaging last night because he was camping as well in the lakes. I didn't see his message till later on, but the Borealis was visible last night. Gutted, I didn't see it. But he told me about the Halo Moon. He said, get outside and have a look. So I got outside the tent and that's why I saw it. Shout out to Andy Beavers, thanks for that, mate. It was cold at the time and I thought, oh, I don't want to get out, but it was fine. As you see, just plodding down these steps. And we can see the car down there. Right, we're back at the bottom. The top car park's here and we're across the road. As I say, don't park in this bottom one. It's expensive, going to one across the road. It's been an epic wild camp on the top of Helvellyn, which is, I think is the third biggest mountain in the UK. We had some great conditions and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please drop a like. And if you're not subscribed, please do consider it. I think 72% of the people who watch the videos aren't subscribed. So if you're watching it now and you all drop to subscribe, you'll really help grow the channel. Hopefully see you in the next one. I don't think we're going to camp again tomorrow. The weather's changing a little bit. So this is it for this one. Say bye, Kay. Bye, Kay. See you later. <laughs>